Hello, friends. So basically, good afternoon. Um, I am making some lunch. It's like 2.30 p.m., but you know. So I'm home alone right now. And this is usually when I get inspired to make a YouTube video because, well, obviously, there's no one else here. So, okay. Today, I kind of want to do a little, like, book review thing because I've been reading a lot and I think I'm going to title this video books I've been reading while single me <laughs> I'm not sure so you know whatever it's titled because you clicked on the video um but basically like I've been reading a lot recently because I listen I mean this isn't the only reason I really love to read we'll start there but then I listened to this podcast and she was talking about like there's different seasons of life. There's like formational seasons. There's, uh, I don't know if it was growing, but something like that. There's transition, there's separation seasons. Um, and there's like the product finished seasons, like had up in a bow. So I have realized that I am in a transition season. Um, and it's been, to say the least, very uncomfortable. It has just been hard. And so, anyway, she was talking about transition seasons and how in transition seasons, it's really great to get wisdom from mentors and counselors to read books and just do like, get more information, gather things um, from other people, from resources that the Lord can like speak to you through and give you things to hold on to in hard seasons. Also, I'm making my lunch, so I'm just gonna show you. These are um, corn chips. I'm going to put some of those in there. So, anyway, I have been doing that. <laughs> uh, yes, I have. I've been reading a lot of books, and I actually am gonna show you my upcoming book list. <laughs> like, what's next in the queue of books to read. And then I'm also going to show you or talk about books that I've already read. Um, and I, this is all in hopes that this would like inspire you, especially in general, but especially if you feel like you're also in a transition season where things are like up in the air, literally. Like, at least for me, my life literally feels like turned upside down and it's been really a challenging season. And I like, I think culture encourages you to like not talk about it when things aren't going great. And just using the best words I can, not using any choice words. Um, I just think that's bull monkey. I think that's stupid because why don't we talk about things? Then we're like this emotional mess that's all bottled up and then we just spew on people because we haven't dealt with our crap. So, <laughs> anyway, that's me being frank. And I'm not saying I don't do that sometimes. I do, because that's what I've been trained to do. But that's not what the Lord wants us to do. And he wants to be able to work through things and deal with hardships. Because that's why like, we need to be dependent on him. That's kind of the point. So, anyway, um, this is my lunch. Tuna, cheese, and chips. And I put it in the oven at 350 for like seven, 10 minutes, something like that. So that said, um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about that. And like, I don't know, I just recently, and this is with people in my life too. Like I, this starts with the people in your life. YouTube is not the place to deal with your crap, but it's a good place to give a platform to share it and to relate with people so that they have other resources like podcasts and stuff. It's a good place to have like that sort of community but like your actual nitty gritty life day in and day out community needs to be like physical people, whether it's on the phone or like in person, but in person is the best. So anyway, I've just been feeling that very deeply and it's been like super difficult. I struggle. Like 
when I listened to that podcast, I was like, oh yeah, separation, I'm definitely in that season. And like, yeah, I'm gonna like get counsel and read books and like ask the Lord for help. But then when it comes down to it, like, it's just been hard. Like, emotionally, mentally, physically exhausting. And that's just hard. I keep wanting to like know what's coming. And in this season of life, I don't know what's coming. Like I literally have just been like, hey Lord, I'm following you, I'm following you. And then I'm like, hoping and praying that things will like get better and it just feels like they keep getting more like close and tight and like painful so this is like a good moment to be able to talk to you all <laughs> because like when i'm crying i don't know i feel like that's not always the best time to turn on the camera anywho so this is a good moment and i'm just going to wait for my lunch to get done and then i'm gonna find a spot to like sit here is the finished product looks a little messy but she good. Hmm. How am I going to do this? I feel like watching YouTubers that are just like eating. Unless you want to watch ASMR is not the move. So. We're, this is our intermission from the video. So. <laughs> with um. I'll put a timestamp right here. If you want to skip to the books. But. I've been. Attempting to eat. Like. A lot. <laughs> A lot of protein in every meal so with this meal it's super easy because it has carbs and has fat but it also has a ton of protein I put a whole can of tuna over the chips and then the cheese is on top and a whole can of tuna is like 25 to 30 grams of protein which is pretty great and then the cheese has a little bit but not not like that much so anyway Especially if you are a woman. No, actually in general. But I feel like guys just easily get more protein because they like want it. So as a woman, just thinking about your protein intake is a good thing to be intentional about. Especially around the holidays um, and just busy seasons in general. I feel like it's easy to go for the thing that you're like just craving and a lot of times we are craving the quick blood sugar thing, which is like sugary and carby. So, hmm. Anywho, that is my spiel on the macronutrient protein. So, these are the books I'm going to talk about that I have already read or am reading. In the middle one I'm reading right now so good these are the books that are in line so i'll go through them and i'll give you i'll either read the backs of them that's gonna lot. but anyway i'll either read the backs of them if i want to or i'll tell you what they're sort of about in my knowledge. So if you've already read these books, the ones I'm not going to read, you know, take my little description as you will. The ones I have read, my interpretation. So this is all subjective. So just bear that in mind. Um, okay. It is now time to start. Got my peppermint tea. So just put that there. You can see the smoke rising or the steam. <laughs> um, all right. So I guess First, I will, I guess I'll talk about the ones I read first, because, you know. Okay, so, first one, all-time favorite, probably. This is called Hind's Feet on High Places. It is an allegory, and it's about a girl who is named Much Afraid, who is trying to find the way to um, the high places where the king, or shepherd king, is leading people like where he leads people so it's an allegory of us on our life's path sort of a pilgrim's progress type deal um following the lord and just going through like it's rough rough things so this one i would say was very convicting for me in like a ooh, sort of way because it just like it hurts and it like hits deep and it's like mm. so I would recommend this for someone in a time where you have put hope in things that aren't in the Lord, I guess, but you want to put your hope in the Lord 
And so you have realized that you need to like let go of those things. Oh, so convicting. Let go of those things that aren't of the Lord and put your hope higher in him. So that <laughs> was very convicting. And um, yeah, it just like, she like, it's just so good. It's so good. I don't even know what else to say to like recommend it, but there's so many like connections that the author, her name is Hannah Hernard, that she makes with real life that you, it's up to the reader to like distinguish and determine, but like, it's also pretty blatantly clear and it just is like, oh, it like hurts, but it's really good. So this one literally, I mean, I think more for women, this is a good read, but maybe for guys too. I'm not a guy. I don't know. But this book, like 10 out of 10. Amazing. Love this book. I have a very old copy. As you can tell, it's literally falling apart, but it's amazing. You can also find it on uh, Libby, I believe, to listen to if you are not as much of a book reader but more of an aud auditory learner, whatever. <sighs> okay, next one. I think there's a theme here. <laughs> no. Okay, this is The Broken Way by Anne Voskamp. I think, is it backwards? I don't know. I'm sorry if it's backwards because I have my camera facing me, so. Um, this book I read a little while ago and then I like have started it again or did start it again. I didn't keep reading, but... This is about like, well, the broken way. It's about when you're broken in life and how to like see that brokenness and acknowledge it and yet know that God has, um, he has a lot for you. He has um, healing for you as well as in those losses, just the pain of that, that you can acknowledge it and like sit with it, but that he understands us and that, um, it's just so good. There's one like little story in it that I remember um, she was telling of, she got, I think it's corn kernels. She took them and put them in a jar and like looked at them and realized that like we have, we're finite in this world, on this earth. Like we have an, um, a finite amount, amount of days that we're gonna live. And we don't know when those days are gonna be up, but each day is one of those seeds and we're like slowly going through them. So for me, that just made me really think of like, a fly's life or something is like super short but that's like the life that they know to that they live and like it's the length it is and that's their life and same with us like we don't know how long our life is but in the grand scheme of eternity it's like super short like we are not on earth that long and i think that recently i've really been realizing that and just being like okay what does my life look like and how do i work through the the pain and the hardship of just what life is but also like have an eternal perspective of like, this is not the end. This isn't it. This isn't all I'm living for. Um, and that's hard. <laughs> so I don't know. That one like also very, very like convicting and honest and um, raw. She's, Anne Voskamp is an amazing writer and she writes so intricately. Like it's crazy. The way that she writes is just like awesome. Like you can pick up, like a lot of innuendos or you can just like read it as it is it's like both so that's another one 10 out of 10 literally i would read this like i don't reread books a ton i reread the bible but like other books i don't always pick up and reread this one i have picked up and i haven't reread the whole thing but i i'll like randomly go through it or i'll find parts that i loved and be like ha ah, gotta look at this again that is the broken way by ann voskamp and then the one that I'm reading right now is this book called All Things New by John Eldridge. This one is about the renewal of all things that I believe is talked about in a lot of places in the New Testament as well as, well, not as well, this is in the New Testament, Revelation, and then some of the Gospels, I believe Jesus talks about it, and then other apostles reference it, um, or yeah, authors in the New Testament. Really good. It's about, well, I'll read the subtitle what it's called heaven earth and the restoration of everything you love so this is another like eternal perspective book just thinking about the bigger picture of our lives because there's so much more to life than the hundred or so years or less 
that we live on earth and that Jesus has more for us in the renewal of all things. There is so, so much to look forward to and so much that the Lord is um, going to renew and make new in, let me see if I can turn this down. Oh, there we go. That he's going to make new and renew in the new heaven and new earth and that he has um, like just all of the things that you um, love, like I said in the subtitle, all those things that you have hoped for or want to see restored or redeemed, um, broken relationships, uh, broken dreams, like all of those things, lost hope, those things God put in us and like in the most beautiful way, he will like renew those and redeem the things that the Satan, <laughs> <laughs> ah, oh my goodness the devil and the world and our own flesh has taken from us or um like stunted in a way that like the lord doesn't actually want it to be that way but because of sin and the fall uh that's just the reality of the world that we live in right now and it's really beautiful it's been really interesting to read definitely he takes some creative liberties as i uh, talked with my friend about yesterday <laughs> he takes some creative liberties with um what the bible is saying and what it means when it says those things so I would say for people that are like super theologically like uh, like steered, like you really want things to be like by the book, I would say this would be a good read for you as well as a challenging read because you're going to be challenged to think about concepts that maybe you haven't before. But also like, why don't we think about that? Like I was just journaling recently and I was like, why wouldn't God want something? If the root of something is love, why wouldn't God want that as a like an attribute a thing that we enjoy uh like an actuality like something that comes into being um why wouldn't he want that and the world twists love so like if you're like oh yeah i totally agree with you and you're like thinking love in the sense of like whatever you want and whatever you like goes that's not who god is god is love in its most perfect and beautiful way like the spotless pure that is him. That's who he is. That's what he wants on earth. And that's not in like a, um, a standard that like we can't attain in that like he doesn't let us. No, he's given us Jesus. And so we get to like partake of these beautiful things. So anyway, um, this book, <clears throat> this book is very good. I highly recommend. I would say like eight out of 10. It's really, really good. It's just not something that I'm like, um, I don't understand it all. I guess I'll just say that. I don't fully understand everything, but I do enjoy it. So those are the three books that I um, have been reading most recently. There's others, but those three <laughs> are all kind of in a similar topic. And yeah, they're really good. So anyway, and then another thing, which is so fun. Um, I have been, I started this little uh, journal that's, I just, call it quotes. And when I'm reading a book, I will go through and either underline if it's my own book and then go through um, afterward, or I'll dog ear the pages if it's one that like isn't a library book or someone else's. Um, I'll dog ear the pages and go back through um, the spots that really stuck out to me and I'll write them down as quotes. So I have quotes from The Broken Away and from All Things New and from um, a devotional that I was reading recently and just different things that I'm in. Um, I'll just write the quote in what day I read it and um, put the page number and it's so nice to have that because like there's parts of books that just like really stick out to you and if you don't write it down you'll probably just like it'll be like gone so anyway this has just been this has been great and I actually am still doing my quotes from Heinz Feet on High Places because I finished the book but then I wanted to start another one really quick so I need to write down but anyway that's just a fun thing a little recommendation if you um enjoy books and want to retain the information a little bit better or just have it to um reference then i would make a little quote book i also heard of people doing it on their notes on their phone which is fine i use my notes for a lot of things but i just happen to have a cute little notebook so i make a quote book um <clears throat> okay i'm gonna throw my tea bag away and then the books i haven't read Alrighty, so next, the books that I have not read yet. I actually have started this one. This is Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. 
Um, this is just a classic and I've been wanting to read it, but as I thought, it's a little wordy and I struggle with that. So, um, yeah, I have heard that this is a good way, it's a good argument for Christianity in using every other possibility or like using, uh, let me start over, using like logical things to make this argument that there are like absolutes and there is like a moral law and a moral code that we have internally that we like follow that there's good and there's bad and there's right and there's wrong. And in today's day and age, and apparently even when C.S. Lewis was here, um, people like to argue that there aren't those things, that everything is subjective and that there's no objective truth, which is not true. Um, and so this is just a really interesting book on that. Um, yeah. So one of the like little um, reviews or whatever um, that someone wrote on the back of the book says, Lewis is the ideal persuader for the half convinced for the good man who would like to be a Christian but finds his intellect getting in the way. Um, that's Anthony Burgess from the New York, Time, New York Times book review. So it's just really interesting. Um, I, it's hard. I started and I think I read like two or three chapters and I was like, what? So I think I'm going to start over, but my brother is letting me borrow this book and I'm definitely very excited because it just feels like really ne necessary in our day and age. So that's, that's that. Okay, next one I received at a raffle at church. Um, and this is called Knowing God by J.I. Packer. Um, J.I. Packer is dead. He lived through 2020. Um, I didn't know that until I got this book. And so, yeah, this is, looks like a very interesting book. Um, I will just read what's on the back. Stemming from Packer's profound theological knowledge, knowing God brings together two key facets of the Christian faith, knowing about God and knowing God through a close relationship with Jesus Christ. Written in an engaging and practical tone, this thought-provoking work seeks to renew and enrich our understanding of God. So, very interesting. I have not started this one yet, but I am excited, and I don't know what J.I. Pack Packer's writing is like, and so I am very interested to see what it's like and to also learn from someone who lived in a very different time in history than me of um was born in 1926 so that is just <clears throat> crazy very cool i'm grateful for books it's awesome to get to learn um okay next one <laughs> this is called the weary leader's guide to burnout and it's by sean nemechek um very recent this was written uh, I think it's 2023. I mean, I guess maybe it wasn't written in 2023, but um, the copyright is 2023. So that's pretty cool. Um, I listened to, I think it was like a four part series, which I will try to link in the description if my phone and such will let me. Um, it was, well, I think, yeah, this is meant for like pastors, but I um, listened to four podcasts about it on, um, on burnout and what he covers in this book. And it seems to be a very, um, is methodical the word? I don't know, but it's like he's going through the ways to help you when you're in burnout. So like how to resolve that and how to walk out in, in like uh, tangible steps, how to walk out the, I was gonna say resolution. I don't know, yeah, resolving the pain and the burnout that you're feeling um, and experiencing. And I don't know, I just, I asked for it for Christmas and I, my family got it for me and it's really good. At least I think it's going to be. I read the foreword the other day and I'm excited. So basically I just need more time to read these books. Um, okay, this next one is actually a poems book. It is by my friend R.C. Lloyd. It's called Chronic Defiance. I've only read a few thus far. But this is a book of poems by my friend who lives um, nearby to me. This is her first published work, I believe. And um, I bought it from her recently. And honestly, just so many things in the like very start of me even hearing about this, as well as knowing the author pretty personally, um, I was just like, oh my gosh, I would like to read this. So got my hands on a copy. And poetry is like a little hard for me because it's like so deep, but then it's like, wait, is it actually that deep? Or am I like trying to like conjure up some deep thought? Um, 
and I feel like it's usually both and, which is fun. Um, so anyway, even the front cover is a, um, is like a nod to the Japanese, I think it's Japanese, art form where, I'm forgetting what it's called, where they take broken things and they um, reinforce the cracked parts with gold and put it back together so that something that was broken is actually more valuable when it's been put back together as like a um, refurbished thing than it was when it was whole. And that is just such a picture of the gospel right there of Jesus taking broken things and making them more beautiful than they could have been when they weren't, like had they not been broken. Um, yeah. So I'm really excited for this. It's awesome. And I'll just read what is on the back here. Um, a refreshing collection of hope and healing that invites you to sit with the uncomfortable aspects of chronic illness without judgment or moralizing. Perfect for anyone who has chronic illness or who loves someone with chronic illness. It's one I will be returning to again and again. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that. So that one you can find on Amazon, I believe. I can probably link all of these books. Okay, next one, what's so amazing about Grace? Um, this one I'm gonna go a little quicker because I don't actually know a ton about it, but this is by Philip Yancey and my pastor and his wife gave it to me. I was having a conversation with them about life and the struggles and all of that and just wanted to understand God's grace and really feeling like I don't understand it. Um, or even like I maybe understand it, but it doesn't penetrate my heart. And so they gave me this book to read and yeah, it really, it looks really good. And they said it's a really great book. So that is what's so amazing about Grace. In the back says, Grace, the most powerful force in the universe, the healing touch we need and the key to transforming a broken world. Uh, so that'll be a fun one. I'm excited. And then lastly, this one's gonna be controversial, um, you know, as, as it will. Um, <laughs> as it were, uh, this is called Victorious Eschatology. This is a book that my dad um, recommended to me. And I'm just going to read the back. This is by Dr. Harold R. Erbel, Eberl and Dr. Martin Trench. As a biblically based optimistic view of the future, this book offers a clear understanding of key events preceding the return of Jesus. We examine Matthew 24, the book of Revelation, and other passages alongside historical events to fully comprehend God's word to his church. Satan is not taking over this world. Jesus is Lord and he will reign until every enemy is put under his feet. So my dad said the first couple chapters of this are like quite uh, deep and theological. So he said to have my Bible out to be able to just sort of unpack it. So <laughs> I'm very interested in uh, that book and what it will have to say. So uh, yeah, those are my book things, review and um, just a little look into the ones I haven't read. Um, and yeah, I really love to read. If you like to read, let me know uh, in the comments what kind of books you enjoy and what you thought of these books, if you read any of them. Um, yeah, I, I just thought that would be a fun thing to do. I've been wanting to make a video on that for a while now. And in a transition season, um, it's just, like I said earlier, important to evaluate where you're at. I think that a lot of people in my generation, I'm not trying to put a stereotype out there that isn't there, but I just, I see this a lot and I even feel this personally, that um, a lot of my generation is kind of stuck in the social media age of just getting stuck with um, scrolling on your phone constantly and just being caught in this web of information that is like a quick or even like not it is information, but just like quick little pieces of information that make you laugh or make you think or whatever for like a second. And it's just this dopamine hit that we just keep constantly going to like Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, whatever it is. And getting this hit of, um, yeah, of dopamine, a little rush because of learning something, feeling like you relate to someone, um, hearing things, laughing at things, uh, all of that, being interested in a topic or a, I don't know, topic or practice. I'm not really sure how to say that. I just, yeah, I really feel that our generation is desiring truth and desiring vulnerability, transparency, genuineness, authenticity, but often we go to the thing that's not actually 
giving that. We're hoping that it's reality, but somewhere inside we know it's not reality and it's not even a way to live. And yet we live like that. And so uh, it's hard because like even right now, like I have all these books that I want to read, but honestly, when I have free days, I don't always choose to read these books. And I'm grateful for the time that I have to read them. And I'm like, I've always been the girl that carried a book. Like, there was an extra moment. I'm going to use it to like, you know, keep reading and getting this in me. But, um, excuse me. It's like, that's not the end all be all. But in this video, I just feel like it's a valuable thing to remember that we have so much information at our fingertips and to choose wisely what we're putting our time into because Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, they all have their place, but they're not like Jesus. <laughs> they're not going to fill the void that we all have. That's just like this gaping wound in us that needs healing and restoration. And even these books are not going to heal that. We need Jesus himself. But choosing books that will lead you closer to the person of Jesus and to the person of God and the Holy Spirit, so, so valuable. And often I do lose sight of that. And, um, I struggle. I definitely struggle. I have a lot of times when I just feel really worn down and stuck. And even today, this morning, I was um, just going about my business and I was just struggling with some temptations with things that I do not want to be struggling with. Um, and praise the Lord, it passed, which is amazing. But I struggled and I had to kind of, you know, tip on the edge for a second and be like, what am I going to do here? Um, and so, yeah, I just think that it's, it's hard. Life is definitely hard and we have different struggles today than even the generation before us had. And so it's okay to have those things that each generation has this. Um, every person has these struggles, these temptations, these um, things that we have to wrestle with and fight against. And um, yeah, so that's my little encouragement and my just relatability um, that I want to put on here. Um, yeah, so <laughs> that is, I guess, all for this video. Um, I hope that that is relatable and that that's kind of um, encouraging to you and inspiring to you. And if there's anyone who wants to do something with um, books in a more uh, communal way, online or whatever, um, I'm always open to book studies, Bible studies, um, that kind of thing. Uh, I have some that I do with my friends at this point, so I, um, you know, might not need another one, but at the same time, I'm always open to building community in awesome ways, and that is a good one. So anyway, um, yeah, I hope that you're encouraged and that you have a blessed day and that you are able to feel the Lord through this video as well as um, in the things that you continue to do today, that you would just feel Jesus close to you and know that he is the lifter of your head and that he is not disappointed in you and he's not going to leave you or forsake you. Um, so thank you for watching and I hope you have a good day.